Station hubs. Every Japanese train station is a miniature city. Shinjuku Station processes 3.6 million passengers daily through 200 exits connecting to 16 railway lines. You can live, work, shop, eat, and get medical care without leaving the station complex. The genius lies in vertical integration. Ground floor has retail, second floor restaurants, third floor offices, fourth floor medical clinics. Your dentist appointment connects directly to your grocery shopping, connects to your train home. No walking through parking lots or driving between appointments. Compare this to Chicago's Union Station, where you exit into a street, highlighting a fundamentally different philosophy of what a station should be. Japanese stations generate revenue from real estate, retail, and transit simultaneously. The station pays for itself through commercial development, not just ticket sales. Denver tried copying this with Union Station, but American zoning laws prevented mixed-use development above the tracks. Remember when you spent 20 minutes looking for parking at the mall, then walked another 10 minutes to reach the store? Japanese station hubs eliminate that entire frustration. Flexible zoning. Japanese zoning operates on inclusion, not exclusion, like American systems. Residential zones allow small businesses, corner shops, and cafes by default. You can run a hair salon from your living room or convert your garage into a ramen shop without a lengthy and expensive rezoning process common in American cities. This creates walkable neighborhoods where daily needs exist within blocks of your home. American zoning separates everything. Houses here, shops there, offices somewhere else. Result? You need a car for milk. Tokyo residents walk to 47% of their destinations because shops exist in residential areas. Houston residents drive to 89% of their destinations because zoning prohibits mixing uses. Japanese flexible zoning adapts to population changes naturally. When families move in, daycare centers appear. When students arrive, convenience stores emerge. The neighborhood evolves organically instead of requiring master plans and rezoning battles that take years in American cities. You've probably seen this if you've visited any old European city where the baker lives above the bakery and the cobbler works next to the butcher. That's what Japanese cities maintain while American suburbs eliminate. Compact design Japanese apartments average 65 square meters but feel spacious through intelligent design. Rooms serve multiple purposes. Dining table folds into wall. Bedroom becomes office during day. Bathroom includes washing machine. Every centimeter serves a function. Americans build 200 square meter suburban houses, then complain about cleaning and heating costs. Japanese compact design reduces construction costs, maintenance expenses, and commute times. Everything you need sits within walking distance because density makes services viable. A single city block in Tokyo supports more businesses than an entire American suburb. Compact design also enables efficient infrastructure. One water pipe serves 50 Japanese families in an apartment building versus 50 separate pipes to American suburban houses. Construction costs per resident can drop significantly, uh, in some cases by as much as 80% when building up instead of out. Remember when you moved and realized you had rooms you never used? Japanese design eliminates wasted space while American suburbs are filled with formal dining rooms that host dinner twice a year. Earthquake planning. Every Japanese building since 1981 must survive magnitude 7 earthquakes without collapse. This drives innovation in flexible construction that benefits daily life too. Buildings use lightweight materials, flexible joints, and distributed structural systems. These same techniques create quieter apartments. Walls that bend with seismic waves also absorb sound between units. Earthquake planning requires redundant infrastructure, so Japanese cities have multiple transportation options. If the main train line fails, buses, subways, and alternative routes keep the city moving. San Francisco has earthquake rules, but still builds brittle infrastructure that fails during small tremors. Japanese earthquake engineering creates resilient cities that handle any disruption, not just seismic events. When COVID reduced train capacity, alternative routes prevented total system breakdown. You've probably experienced this. When one highway shuts down, American cities grind to a halt because there's only one route between destinations. Japanese cities build multiple pathways for everything. Capsule hotels. Capsule hotels prove luxury isn't about space, it's about efficiency. A two-meter pod contains bed, entertainment system, climate control, and storage. Shared bathrooms and lounges provide amenities without duplicating them in every unit. Nightly rates cost less than most American parking fees. This philosophy of hyper-efficiency, seen in its most extreme form in capsule hotels, is also a key principle in Japanese housing design. Why have a massive bedroom you only use for sleeping? Japanese homes optimize space utilization instead of maximizing square footage. Americans spend 30% of income on oversized housing, then wonder why they can't afford other luxuries. Capsule hotels also solve short-term housing needs that American cities handle poorly. 
Business travelers, students between apartments, and people in transition find affordable accommodation without month-long leases or expensive hotels. You've probably paid $200 for a sterile hotel room that's 80% empty space. Capsule hotels charge $40 for everything you actually need. Vending networks. Japan has one vending machine for every 23 people selling everything from coffee to umbrellas to hot meals. This creates distributed commerce that eliminates food deserts and reduces commercial real estate costs. Why rent expensive retail space when a vending machine provides 24-hour service? A vending networks also support local businesses. Small manufacturers sell products through machines placed in neighborhoods, reaching customers without storefront expenses. The system generates passive income for property owners who host machines while providing convenience to residents. American cities struggle with food access in poor neighborhoods because supermarkets can't generate enough revenue. Japanese vending networks ensure everyone has access to basic necessities regardless of location or income. Machines accept cash, cards, and phone payments, serving all economic segments. Remember when you needed something at midnight and drove 15 minutes to find a gas station? A Japanese vending machines are everywhere, always open, always stocked. Bullet train. Bullet trains travel 320 kilometers per hour connecting cities across Japan in less time than Americans spend in traffic jams. Tokyo to Osaka takes 2.5 hours by train versus 6 hours driving. The network eliminates domestic flights for most routes, reducing carbon emissions while increasing convenience. High-speed rail succeeds because Japanese cities are dense enough to support stations. American attempts at high-speed rail fail because cities are too sprawled to generate ridership. Bullet trains also drive regional development. Cities compete to host stations because rail connections attract businesses and residents. California spent 20 years and $20 billion on high-speed rail that connects parking lots in small towns. Japanese bullet trains connect dense urban centers with millions of potential passengers. You've probably spent more time in airport security lines than Japanese travelers spend on 300-mile train journeys. Public Baths Sento Public baths serve as community centers in every Japanese neighborhood. Beyond bathing, they provide social interaction, relaxation, and health services. Many include gyms, restaurants, and medical facilities. This communal approach reduces individual housing costs. No need for large bathrooms or hot water systems when shared facilities offer superior amenities. Public baths also support elderly residents who might struggle maintaining home facilities. Social interaction combats isolation while shared costs make luxury amenities affordable for everyone. American culture prioritizes privacy over community, resulting in expensive individual solutions for common needs. Every suburban house needs its own pool, gym equipment, and entertainment room. Japanese public facilities serve the same functions at fraction of the cost while building social connections that improve mental health and community cohesion. You've probably joined a gym for $100 monthly that's mostly empty machines in a sterile building. Japanese public baths cost $5 and include community. Please like and subscribe for more videos like this. I'm curious, which of these principles do you wish you had in your own city?